Hey, Shalom, I'm Mishola, Mr. of Souls, by giving all praise to you, by showing me how shy, the balance of positive GMS, and honest to you, brothers, that are doing the work in truth, more sincerity. Uh, literally, the spirit, I was thinking about um, uh, this, this, this screenshot that I took, like, ages ago now, and uh, basically I was going through, you know, the brothers, uh, you know, uh, brothers in my camp's video, and I saw that, you know, one of the brothers in the camp, was actually you know spirit got on him to do something on the IMS so I thought hey man you know what let me uh let me find this screenshot and let me uh let me do a video on it right um so basically I've traced where it came from um it was an excerpt from this book here um uh it was, I believe the book is this the state of Africa and it basically reads um uh it basically reads this right uh, and you know I, I just looked for the string developing nations pay the West nine times more in the Google and I basically was able to find the books on page 227 where it says uh, developing nations pay the West nine times more in debt repayment than they receive in aid from Western countries now if you know anything about the Brexit one of the things that was complained about uh, in mass was uh, the debt that we the debt this the debt that and it's just like the foreign aid foreign aid foreign aid blah 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 blah, blah. and also with the East you've got to be careful because he uses a slick tongue because You've got different types of aid as well. You've got um, tide aid, which is basically aid with uh, aid with conditions. So it's not really aid; it's really a loan. Why? And anyone, you know, if if you look through history, doing deals with the devil usually ends up in a bad place, which is where most of those states in Africa are. Right? Uh, they receive an aid from Western countries. For example, after devastating floods in Mozambique destroying the homes of more than a million people, right, um, Western countries coughed up a tiny 40 million uh, pounds, 40 million in aid, but Mozambique pays more than 70 million US dollars a year in debt repayments to Western banks, right, um, <laughs> you know, so, hey man, this is, it just really shows you, you know, the, 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 just how much of a devil Esau is, you know, over here in um in, in the UK, if say you know, uh, you know, a city was to be um you know completely flooded and say a thousand people, uh, um you know, uh, made homeless, right? You, you know, you can imagine the response that they would get. But here it is, a million people got um you know got dis uh, you know uh, their houses got destroyed. And they only sent over forty million, uh, forty million. That's like forty pounds a person. But here it is, Mozambique pays back more than they were given in aid, right? So like I said, it's from this book. And, you know, this book looks like it's got some juicy facts, you know, on the IMF and the way he saw deals in the monetary system, right? But I'm just going to get into some scriptures. This is uh, Psalm 55 and 21. It says, the words of his mouth are smoother than butter. So here it is. He'll, he'll, he'll happily, um, in fact, let me start from verse 20. It says, uh, he hath put forth his hands against such as be as peace with him. He hath broken his covenant, right? So he, you know, Esau will come. You know, people will be just dealing peace, peace, peaceably with with Esau. You know, name names, cat Reuben, right? They deal peaceably with Esau, but then Esau comes back with that backstabbing, right? It says he hath broken his covenant. It says the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. Right? His his words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Once again, I said, uh, think about Gad and Reuben here, right? But also, if you if you look at um, the example that I'm given over there, uh, those those uh, those countries be thinking, man, you know, you know, we're going to get this aid, this Daniel. Well, really and truly, more time, they're just shills. You know, the, 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 the leaders of those governments there that Esau has propped up, you know, because if there's a, if there's a, uh, would you call it, if there's a leader over there that Esau doesn't like, he'll get him toppled. Really, if there's resources, especially if there's resources in that country, take Gaddafi. You know, there's resources in that country, and also Gaddafi was going to do something that was going to be uh, catastrophic to the American economy. Right? So, like I was saying, Esau will make it look like he's doing, you know, all of this good, you know, he's giving aid, this, that, and the other, so the average man over here thinks oh my god he's all he's such such a great man such a philanthropist but he's not because really and truly he has ulterior motives right he'll go and give you aid in with one hand but then take everything from you with the other right he'll give you one pound in one hand and take ten from you man 
right? It's so Psalm 58 and 3. It says, The wicked, Esau, so called white man, are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Right? So as soon as they, you know, as soon as they come out of the womb, <laughs> you know, basically that is giving the analogy that they're, they're, they're wrong, from, <laughs> you know, if you can use that word. They're wrong from, from the ground up, from the very beginning. There's no good in them. Right, where you know they 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 lie to the people. The thing is, they lie openly as well, and in, in in the sense that they don't lie, but the way they speak is just so um, what you call it, such jargon that the average man doesn't understand what it is that's going on. Right, uh, let me let me uh, yeah, get their poison. Uh, poison represents the uh, what you call it, their philosophies. Like the philosophies are like the poison of a serpent. Right, once, once, you know, when you get the poison of a serpent, man, hey, man, if you don't heal yourself real quick, you're going to die, man. You know, when you really delve into Esau's, uh, you know, philosophies, man, it's going to be death unto you. And one of the philosophies of Esau is this debt system, this system where, you know, you just borrow, 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 and then everything will be okay. Well, no, because we all know that the economy is going to crash real soon, you know, laws all this, yeah. You know, and, and and as these as these countries have found out, you know, had taken a loan from Esau, you know that it's just going to be the death of you, man. You know, over here you've got the, what's called payday loans, where uh, you know you get some stupidly astronomical, um, what do you call it, APR. So you might borrow, you know, a hundred pound, but the APR is like four thousand percent. Right, this is Isaiah 14 and 4 says, Thou shalt take up this proverb against um, against the king of Babylon. Basically, uh, I took reference in America now. It says, And say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. Right, once again, America. Right, um, but saying, How hath the oppressor ceased? Who's the oppressor? Esau, man. Esau's going to run oppressing the whole world. Right, it says, Verse 5, It says, The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote, he he who smote the people in wrath of the continual stroke, he he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. Right. So when you look at all of these heathen nations, man, um, that have, you know done dealings with uh, done dealings with Esau, man, they're they're being struck with a continual stroke. When you're when you when you're the interest on your debt is all that you can afford to pay. And you know we can't even pay the debt off on its own, man. You're 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 a subservient. You're a slave. You know you're completely uh, oppressed by the by by the uh, by the uh, by the lender, which in this case is Esau. Right. So this man, you know, he 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 uh, kills with the sword and he kills financially. In that film, The Big Short, it was something like for every one percent of. Unemployment, forty thousand people die, something like that. But look at what un mass unemployment, mass poverty has done. How many people that has killed? Oh, you know, throughout the whole world, right? This is Isaiah thirty three and one. It says, "Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou wast not spoiled, and dealt treacherously, and dealt not treacherous with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, that shall be spoiled, and when thou shalt make an end." To do treacherously, they shall do treacherously with thee. Once again, Esau's just got a history of dealing uh, treacherously with, with 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 people, man. The first thing he did as Cain was kill his brother. Well, in fact, let's look at what this word treacherous. Cover the figure acts covertly or covert harm, oh, man. Underhand tactics, pillaging, deceitfully, deal treacherously, deceit not. If that's not a characteristic of Esau, I don't know what is. Right, he goes into these countries and he spoils and he spoils and he spoils. In fact, you know, I believe we've got that here in Habakkuk. Right, but he goes in these countries and he spoils and he takes, but he just carries on taking. Look at the land, for instance. You know, the land has a purpose. It, you know, it gives forth food. Right, but what does Esau do? He takes and he takes and he takes up until the point where the food... You know, the land isn't even able to produce food, which is why you have the dust bowl. Right? This is Habakkuk 2.5. It says, 
Yea, also because he transgresseth my wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, which is why he's going all into these different countries, which is why he's trying to set up uh, a central bank uh, in all the countries of the world so that they can be subservient to him. Right, in fact, the scriptures talk about the borrower and the lender. I just can't forget what it said. I mean, it's like how it's... Um, Right, it says uh, Proverbs 22 and 7. It says, uh, The rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Right, in this instance, man, all, the, all of these nations have taken loans ultimately from the Rothschilds. Right, they're, they're, they're slaves, servants to, you know, to, to, to the lender, the Rothschilds, uh, you know, the international bankers. Right? So it's uh, Habakkuk 2 and 5. Um... Yeah, neither keepeth at home who enlargeth his desires as hell. And like I said, one of the ways he does that is by getting people into debt. Right? Uh, there's, a, there's a film. Oh, man. I forgot the name. Uh, uh, Snatch, I think it is. Snatch is a Guy Ritchie film. But basically, there's a, there's a villain in there. Uh, and uh, one of the things that said is, hey, man, you don't want to be in this guy's debt. Because once you're in this guy's debt, you're fucked. <laughs> Which is a great analogy for uh, the Esau. Right, uh, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. Shall not these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his? Right, it's because he, he steals, man. He, he's a thief by nature. <laughs> you know, once again, ask Gad and Reuben. Right. It says, how long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay, right? And, uh, you know, it's a mistranslation. Clay represents the debt. You know, when you look at the, in the U.S. debt clock, man, it's just increasing. It's a spirit as well, because also I was told um, today something like the U U.K. debt goes up some astronomical money per second. I, f I know I'm not going to quote the figure because I forget exactly what it was. Um, you know, uh, and there's from the, the two figures I'm thinking in my head, there's quite a big gulf in them. So I don't even want to, you know, suggest. But, you know, you can look it up, right? This is a, it's a Sirach 14 and 9. It says, A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. Once again, Esau, right? He, he had what he had, right? He had Edom, right? But he didn't want just Edom. He wanted the whole world. He wanted, an, he wanted the whole world and everything in it, right? And once again, like I was saying, the way he gets people... The way he's got the majority, well, a lot of these nations, because he's got the majority of these nations with, with, with the sword, you know, the British Empire, you know, then the American Empire, you know, the American military. One of the ways he gets them as well is by that debt. Like we just read in our, in our Proverbs, the borrower is servant to the lender, right? It says, and the iniquity of the wicked drieth up his soul, Right? Uh, let's look up yeah because I had this uh, word cover here it says yearn to possess something especially belonging to another and that's, that's Esau man he, he covets what other people have it's sort of like um, that, you know, that kid who get toy you know, and he's having fun with it but then you see another kid with a toy and he's like nah <laughs> nah I want your toy and the thing is he'll take he won't even play with your toy he just doesn't want you to have it no, it's Revelation 6 and 4 says, and there went out another red horse that was red, you know, and that's giving you, um, what do you call it, a clue as to who it's talking about, who, who's red, the Edomites. And it says, and power was given to him that sat there on to take peace from the earth. And who, who's done that? Who's got, the, who's got the mass of masses of people living in abject poverty? It's something like in here over here in the UK. If you're on minimum wage, you're still on that. I think it was a, it was top five percent earners in the whole world. And it says goes on to say it says and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. But the point in that one is to take peace from the earth, man. Like I said Esau's got everyone living in abject poverty. Here it is. You know, people live in countries where, 
you know, they, they're just surrounded in mass by, uh, you know, by, by food, but they're still hungry. You know, by good arable land, but they're still hungry. You know, all East will go there, like take Nigeria, for example, and just have a massive oil spill there, ruin the land. It said that the land, I uh, forgot whether it was BP or Shell, but the land that was ruined by the, um, you know, by one of them oil companies was the size of Wales. Now, Wales isn't a big country, but that's a big plot of land to just get, you know, just get ruined. You know, when you go to Wales, man, it's, it's nice, it's beautiful, greenery. You know, you've got the sheep over there, man, just running free. You've got the hills, you've got the scenery. You know, you go all of the, you know, all of the nice little, you know, sceneries over there. Now imagine that, all covered with oil. That's that's what they did, right? But you know, I just wanted to touch on that real quick, right? And uh, you know, uh, with that, I'm gonna say shalom.